<laughs> Reaction to events in Gaza flooded onto the street today. Tens of thousands who'd said they'd come in solidarity with the people of Palestine. The march in London was one of the biggest in years, coinciding with Nakba Day, the anniversary of the expulsion of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians after the creation of the State of Israel. As a third generation Palestinian, I can't go back to my home, to my grandfather's villages, which ha still have their homes today that no one's living in, right? And I can't go back to it. No one can go back to it. It was occupied by the Israeli soldiers, right? And right now they're killing people. They're killing our family in Gaza. I feel like Israel is an occupation. I don't think it's a fair fight. The Palestinians do not have an army. They don't have anyone backing them. They don't even have access to basic necessities in Gaza. There are so many people here who are standing firmly with our case because we have the right to live like everybody else. My message is not to stop killing children. I don't care about lands and things as long as they don't kill children. The protesters were bound for the Israeli embassy, or as near as they could get to it, calling for an end to the bombing of Gaza. But for nearly a week now, things have followed a deadly pattern. Hamas rockets fired into Israel, Israel striking back, it says, at Hamas targets. Today, baby Omar Hadidi woke up in a Gaza hospital, an only child. His mother and brothers were killed when an Israeli airstrike hit a house in the Shati refugee camp. They targeted the house they were in. There were no rockets there, just women and children. No rockets, just peaceful children celebrating Eid. What have they done to deserve this? A rocket hit their house, over their heads, without warning. The Israeli Defence Force said it gave civilians in this building sufficient time to get out before this. It was home to media organisations, including the Associated Press and Al Jazeera. Israel said Hamas kept military assets inside and buildings like it are lawful military targets. Since Monday, thousands of rockets have been launched from Gaza into Israeli cities. Today, a residential area in Ashdod was hit. We want to just live in peace and then quiet. I have uh, three kids, small ones, and I need to handle, you know, the uh, explaining them what happened here and uh, why this is happening. So it's not a trivial situation. Some are warning of potential civil war inside Israel after violence in mixed Jewish and Arab-Israeli communities like Lod, where Arab protesters clashed with police last night. The United Nations Security Council will meet tomorrow to discuss the worsening violence. Well, in a moment, we'll hear from Ohad Zemet from the Israeli Embassy in London, but I've also been speaking to the Palestinian journalist, Yusuf Hamash, who's in Gaza, and I asked him what the situation is like where he is right now. Uh, it's getting insane after targeting Jala Tower, they start to target in Rafah, they start to target in middle area. Uh, I just heard okay, they start now they are targeting in Bitlahia. I don't know if you hear it or not. Yeah, we can hear it. This is the daily life in this escalation. Are people uh, getting any warnings to get out? Uh, Sometimes, yes. Actually, this is, there, there is no guarantees for these things. Yes. Uh, today, early morning, at midnight last night, sorry, at Shati camp, they attack a building without warning any one of them. A building where containing 18 members, nine, nine of them are killed without any warning. I don't think if they warn a family who a house who contain 18 members, they will refuse to flee. And so are people Sometimes, staying yeah, in their homes is, or, or yeah, are they going into... Um, you know, it was, refugee yeah. centres anywhere. Most of the north area of Gaza had to flee to another school. And I, I, I live in this, actually, I, my, my house had been bombed, so I had to flee for, for, for houses. This is the fourth house. What happened when your house was bombed? I, I don't know what happened to my house, because they attacked my house twice. The first day after I went, to, uh, when I, the second, after they attacked it on Tuesday, Wednesday before I flee with my, my parents, I went to my house. I went to my house to bring some stuff, some clothes, some stuff for my wife. But they attacked again while I was inside the house. So it was a crazy thing. I had to escape one more time the next day on Wednesday. We can hear the bombing in the background. How far away is that? I'm not sure, but maybe like half a kilo. But this is, uh, this is not really 
loud يعني cuz this is by tanks it's not f16 or f4 planes يعني otherwise they, I, i don't think i will still have the signal and you will hear it clearly more than that so this is shelling from from ground forces from yes we saw today another building being hit used by the media used by associated press and other media companies has the media effectively been shut down in gaza some of them have been shut down because most of them there is jalat uh, tower that have been targeted uh, one hour ago who contains several offices for media local and international media actually that have been targeted one hour ago which contain a lot of media offices in gaza one of them was uh, many of them were the local media also usually as journalists we understand that according to international law we should not be targeted but i think that the is the occupation uh, is not accept, uh, yani respecting any they are not respecting any law or international law to and they are there is nothing safe in gaza yani well in the last hour the israeli prime minister benjamin netanyahu has spoken to president biden claiming israel is doing everything it can to avoid harming civilians with me now is ohad zemet who's the spokesperson for the israeli embassy in london thanks for coming in Why is Israel targeting journalists? Does the truth hurt? Israel doesn't target journalists. Uh, freedom, Israel upholds freedom of speech. is one of our pillars of, uh, of our democracy. What's happened is that Hamas, this radical jihadi organization, this is their tactics. They are hiding their, it was their military intelligence apparatus and, and also machines within you know, this building. You're, you're saying Hamas military intelligence was based yeah, in the same according, building? According to the IDF, uh, Just Do you have any evidence for that that you'll be able to make public? So I don't know if we can make public, you know, Israel intelligence on on how we target. But uh, if we do, I hope we can and we will publish it. But every targeting is done in accordance with international law. We target only uh, military targets, and actually we we go to. But you can say anything is a military target. International okay. law says that the targeting, not just of people but of proper civilian property, is a war crime. So I can tell you what international law says in this specific case. It says that you can target a military target, right? You need to do it in a proportional manner, and this is what we do. We uh, warn the people, we text them, we call them. We go to a great extent, even beyond international law, because we want to minimize civilian, civilian casualties. So this is what we did. Unfortunately, Hamas, this, as I said, jihadi organization that wants to replace Israel with some kind of an Islamic state, this is their tactics. They hide in these buildings exactly because of this. Did you text and call the children who were killed in that airstrike in Gaza in the refugee camp? I don't did know. You, did you I don't, I don't, I don't know what specific... Uh, I mean, there were 10 people from... killed today, and most of them are children, in one airstrike. So I don't know about the specific of this, uh, of this incident. What I know is that when we can, we give early warnings, and we try to minimize Civilian, civilian casualties. We target only Hamas targets, so we don't target children. We don't target uh, civilian infrastructure. We target Hamas targets, and this is a very, you know, this this war, this conflict, is very uh, difficult combat situation. We try to minimize, as I think, even beyond any other military in a similar uh, uh, circumstances. But the world just has to take your word for it that every single bomb, every artillery shell lands in a place where there was also Hamas. And you can say that about pretty much anywhere in Gaza. It's a, it's a tightly packed place, as I, you know. I, I, and, and so it's very difficult, isn't it, when, when, when it is the civilians who are, who are dying? First of all, it's, you know, it's tragic when people are dying and we've seen... You know, Because it's also a war crime to have you know, that collateral damage, knowing that there's going to be that collateral damage of civilian casualties. I can tell you specifically that every planned attack, there is... A legal advice to it. So we have international lawyers, I know them personally, and they, you know, they try to, to see the military advantage and to act in a, in according to the principle of proportionality. And I can tell you, we have a robust legal system. So if you, if someone thinks that a certain attack was not done in accordance with international law, they can appeal to the courts, and we have Palestinians, you know, they can appeal to the Israeli courts, while to their own courts, you know, they don't have in the Palestinian Authority, an independent judiciary. So they appeal to our courts, and our courts can scrutinize. We, we can, you know, there is a robust legal system that can check itself. I mean, I know Israel often argues that 
Hamas is responsible for those civilians who were killed in Gaza mm -hmm. because of its use of, of rockets against Israel. By that logic, Israel is also responsible for the people being killed in your country, aren't you? The so, 10 people who've been killed since Monday, it is Israel, Israel's fault that they have been killed. So we have to, to understand and have to remember how it all began, right? We have this, this time. There is no change. You know, we had seven years of relatively calm. We had this Hamas, as I said, with the jihadi ideology, try to incite people in this holy time of Ramadan and this holy place in Jerusalem. And, you know, when they, with them, with their ideology, start shooting rockets for, in order to gain political momentum within the Palestinian society, we have to act in order to protect our people, right? We, don't, we didn't want this war, we de-escalated, we did numerous steps in order to de-escalate the situation. We didn't want this, this conflict to but, happen. But you were harassing worshippers, weren't you? I mean, you were using no. flashbangs in the, you know, one of the most sacred Muslim mosques, the Aqsa Mosque. In, in Islam. I mean, that's a very provocative thing to have done. That's what started all of this, isn't it? No. What, what happened in Jerusalem, you know, every, what happened this year, every Ramadan, we have hundreds of thousands of worshippers. Israel, you know, you, all the time uh, protect the freedom of worship and freedom of religion. And what happened is that because of this incitement by this jihadi group Hamas, we see people stockpiling rocks throwing rocks, throwing flares at the police, and the police needed to police the situation. They needed to safeguard people's lives. OK, this... let, let me ask you about yeah. what's going on in the cities, because this is very concerning. Mm -hmm. We've seen lynch mobs of extremists targeting, you know, uh, Jewish extremists targeting uh, Muslims, and we've also seen attacks on synagogues and, and Jewish targets as well. This is a conflict that is now spreading into Jewish cities in a way it hasn't before. As, as how, how, you know, you've got to de-escalate, otherwise that's going to go... So, in Israel, you can see that all political party, all leaders, the president, the prime minister, they all condemn the violence. And I think you have to show more people who work together. So you see, in, in Israel, a lot of people, I, I just, you know, I just read of a restaurant owner in, uh, in Acre. You know, he's been asked, what, uh, you know, how do you feel when Arabs, uh, um, you know, burned your, your, uh, you know, your restaurant? And he said, I'm more, there are more Arabs came to help me to restore the restaurant and put up the fire. So I think you need to look at this. There are much more people in Israel that wants to live in peace, in peace, sorry. The problem is, and, and, and they say themselves, it's not me saying this. You see Arab Israelis say Hamas doesn't represent us with its radical jihadi ideology. We want to live in peace. Oh, Hazanet, thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you for having me.